Alrighty, as you see, we're ready to put the electrical on. This mounts on the back, covers the, covers the motor, and these leads got to come through here. And that's sort of tight. So, what I did is I got me a little piece of uh, MIG wire to use as a fish tape. So I'm going to shove that on through. And I just already made a little hook on the end. So I'll hook that there. And take my electrical tape and tape the ends together so nothing jumps off the wire. Since I'm not trying to pull wires up through a wall or across the ceiling or through conduit or something, I'm not going to use a lot of tape because I'm not going to use much force to pull them. But I do want them to pull through cleanly. There. Ah. The background fell down. And I pull it out. Let's try this again. Okay, the uh, next step is putting the electricals together. I got my box, the motor cover with the power cord leads. I got me a little piece of MIG wire. I'm going to make a sort of a fish tape. So I'll go ahead and feed that through. Hook it through, already made a hook, hook it through the ground and squish it. Hopefully it won't fall out until I'm ready. And just to make sure everything sticks together, I got some electrical tape. And that should allow me to pull everything through See how easy that was. Of course, sticky tape. There's the grounds. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Star washer on the back side so it grabs hold of the brass and the case, the headstock case. Leave them loose for the moment and put these back in the cup. Leave out the little pointy screws, hold the cover down. Before I put that back on, since I'm going to leave the safety switch off. I may remount the cover, but I'm not going to reconnect the safety switch. I need to put a jumper on those last two terminals, which are number six and seven. 
Uh, originally I thought it was a B, but it's a 6. So, let me... this. One end's already tinned. I'm not going to bother with tinning the other. All I'm doing is making a little jumper. And before this goes back on, I think I'll take it apart and remove the micro switch in the case. Should have brought my wire strippers in. I think I'll go get them. Let's hit pause. Alright, back with the wire strippers and a couple of additional tools. And there we go. going to tin this in, but there we go. I think I will go ahead and insert it first. Almost always need at least three hands to do some of this stuff. And are you in there? No, you're not. Open you up again. Go ahead and back off the other one as well. Try this again. There we go. Yeah, I see the wire moving and I think it grabbed it this time. Yes it did. All right. that one in that side. So now with no safety switch I can turn it on no matter whether the shield is up or down. Yep, it's in there too. Good. And little screws for the cover, plastic cover. And I hope I'm talking loud enough this time. I know my previous videos, the uh, volume wasn't too good. I'm too cheap to buy a real camera. My iPhone works. Eventually, maybe when I get rich, huh? I'll buy a camera. A little bit more lead on the power wires. Come on, you can make it. There we go. Make sure it clears the belt. Yes, it does. I think I'll go ahead and screw the cover down. You can't see, see from that angle, but I'm on a roll, so deal with it. That's one screw started. And come on. Get the hole. There it is. And 
motor cover and power cord pigtail is in place. All right. And if I, I did refer back to my video where I dismantled it, so I know the black cord, black lead of the power cord goes to the bottom. of the power switch. Maybe I should have left that cover loose. There we go. You fall down, go boom. Not good for electronics, but it's cheap. And white or common to the switch, which also goes to the light or fuse, excuse me. Maybe the fuse to common. Interesting. All right. Now the motor. Forward, reverse. White left, black right. If it was made in America, they would have put the white on the right. Just because it's an easy mnemonic. And we got that in there. Turn it the right way around, grab the little grommet for the lead screw, slide that up on there, lining up the holes. Ooh, I almost forgot something. Slide it back off. The uh, shield that protects the wires from the lead screw. That would have been funny if I'd left that off and in a couple of weeks smoke started coming out because the lead screw was rubbing on the wires. <laughs> they put safety things in there for a reason. Not always necessary, but when in doubt, it's always best to leave the safety equipment in place. I've been working around electrical equipment and rotating equipment since I was a teenager, so I am going to bypass, like I did, I put the jumper on the uh, cover safety. Once again, get that over the grommet. Now for the little flatheads. screws holes okay well I ain't gonna like I said I'm gonna have lots of bolts and screws left over from the original lathe forward reverse on off speed you ready for the ultimate test let's give it some juice Let's go forward. And it spins. And reverse. And it spins. So, I think I'm satisfied with that. I did previously mount the change gears and adjusted them so they're engaged. Let me 
check the engagement of the lead screws. There we go. On forward, we'll go low RPM. And that turns. Let's speed it up. And look at it go around, and here comes the carriage. Slow it down, turn it off. Let's go to high speed. Still in forward. Hang on. Oh, look at it go. Ain't that sweet. Try it in reverse. I'm going to go ahead and take it up to speed and then try engaging the lead screw at speed. See what happens. <laughs> I like it. So, for now, the rest. I believe is cosmetics just the well I will put my splash shield back on after I remove the micro switch if that's possible I see low three little screws so let's take that apart little bitty short Cheap metal screw like things. And itty bitty screws on that macro switch. But since those are no longer necessary, I think I'll leave that on that backing plate. I might find another use for this macro switch. If I ever get crazy enough to build a CNC table or convert this thing to CNC, that'd make a nice little limit switch. And that was going to mount right there. Or maybe I will take it off because that leaves that cup up. Yeah, I'll remount that cover. But you don't need to watch that. Let me push you back down to low gear. Disengage the uh, change gears. And I think that's it for the time being. Hopefully next time you see me, it'll be mounted on the lay stand. Well... There are the leftover parts, uh, the original Harbor Freight tools, some of the various tools I used, actually that's all of the hand tools, I'm not going to show you another picture of the drill press, and the parts that I have not used or will not use in mounting it, I'm not going to put the chip tray under it. I'm just going to leave it bare on the lay stand. That's it.